Hey guys, welcome to Coffee and Cryptos. That being said, to kick off the episode, what I've got in my cup today is a vanilla latte. Oh, that's good stuff. Now, for today's video, we are going to discuss some of the fundamentals about cryptocurrency. Let's get started. Most of you tuning into this channel probably already know what cryptocurrency is. However, for those of us that are just getting started, a quick internet search provides us with this Wikipedia definition. So Wikipedia defines cryptocurrency as a digital currency designed to work as a medium of exchange through a computer network that is not reliant on any central authority, such as a government or bank, to uphold or maintain it. It is a decentralized system for verifying that the parties to a transaction have the money that they claim to have, eliminating the need for traditional intermediaries, such as banks, when funds are being transferred between two entities. At its core, cryptocurrency is meant to be the answer between how we send money from point A to point B without the need for banks. This is why the concept has been so polarizing because it upsets the power balance of the traditional finance system. In this new system, power of currency lies with the people rather than institutions. But how does it all work? So cryptocurrencies all vary to some degree, but they generally work using a couple of components. One of those components is the blockchain, which is a distributed ledger that is secured by hashes. And then another one of those components is something called a consensus algorithm. And all that is is just a fancy name for telling you how they handle how transactions are validated. The two most popular types of consensus algorithms are proof of work and proof of stake. Now, while they each perform similar functions, the key difference is how they choose and qualify users to add transactions to the blockchain. In a proof-of-work system like Bitcoin, miners compete to solve complex algorithmic problems with sheer computing power. The first miner to solve the problem gains the authority to add new blocks to the blockchain for transactions. Additionally, the miner also receives compensation in the form of the crypto coin which they are mining for, in this case, Bitcoin. Now, in a proof-of-stake system like Ethereum, miners pledge an investment in that particular digital currency before validating transactions. In order to validate blocks, the miners need to put up stake with coins of their own. The miners also show how long they have been validating transactions. The choice for who validates each transaction is random using a weighted algorithm, which is weighted based on the amount of stake that they have and their validation experience. And after a miner verifies a block, it is added to the chain, and that miner receives more of that cryptocurrency for their fee along with their original stake. So perhaps you're here because you've heard of some illustrious promise that crypto can bring. You may have heard the claims about how Bitcoin is digital gold, or how it's a hedge against inflation, or how that it's even the path towards unimaginable wealth. So this begs the question, is cryptocurrency right for you? Unfortunately, there is no one-size-fits-all answer. Per the disclaimer at the beginning of this video, I am not qualified to give investment advice. If you are curious to see if crypto deserves a place in your portfolio, you need to speak with a licensed financial advisor. Now, while it is my personal opinion that crypto holds great promise, it is not without great risk, and every investor has different risk tolerance. Nobody knows the future, and you should only be prepared to invest what you are prepared to lose. All of us crypto guys on YouTube the only thing we can do is provide you with our facts and our information, along with our own personal opinions and experiences, in order to help you, the viewer, make a better informed decision. I will always disclose my personal biases and which coins I hold in my personal portfolio because my intent is never to deceive. You can't go around just investing in coins that YouTubers tell you to. That is not how you're gonna, this, that's not the key to success in the crypto space. A lot of it is just watching us doing your own research, reading into articles, and eventually, you know, staying up with the news and latest updates and making the decision yourself. It is so, so crucial that you do your own research. These videos can be used for research purposes, but they should never be taken as anything more. They should not be taken as investment decisions. They should not be seen as signals to buy this coin. Now, I can't speak for all of crypto YouTuber, uh, all of crypto YouTube, excuse me, and there may be those out there who have the intent to mislead their viewers or just tell them which coins to buy. That is not the aim of this channel. You are not going to see me telling you which coins to buy. 
I may discuss updates on coins that I like, and I may discuss updates on coins that I hold personally, but that's all there will be. It's going to be updates. It's going to be news. It's going to be uh, how those coins work. It's not going to be anything like you should buy this coin. Ultimately, that decision will always lie with you, the viewer. Speaking of the coins I hold, there are many cryptocurrencies out there and many that aim to do similar things within the industry. For example, there are many different types of Web 3.0 cryptos or ones that have smart contract functionality or even metaverse play to earn gaming tokens. The list goes on. It would be foolish to spread yourself thin along all of these coins. So in the end, it is a bit of research and a shot in the dark to select which crypto is right for you. At the end of the day, these are all primarily speculative assets, and all anyone can do is guess to how practical the utility will be of these cryptocurrencies. I do classify my cryptos into certain categories of risk, and overall, I do try to concentrate the majority of my investments into the largest and most well-known projects. I personally don't find any use in hunting for the next hidden gem that might be potentially buried in a sea of obscure microcap coins, but to each their own. So to start off the list of my own personal holdings, let's begin with the low risk category first. These consist of Bitcoin and Ethereum, so no surprises there. Moving on to the medium risk category, I have Quant, Cardano, Solana, Polkadot, Avalanche, Polygon, and Cosmos. For the high risk category, I have Decentraland, Hedera Hashgraph, and The Sandbox. And lastly, for the very high risk category, I have Anchor, Kadena, Flux, and Koti. In future videos, I plan to go more in depth about these cryptocurrencies, explain about how they work, as well as discuss some of the latest headlines in the crypto space. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and be sure to follow us on Instagram at Coffee and Cryptos. I'll catch you all in the next video. See you around.